up, some in the back. And our upcoming events, we have a mom's night out this Friday. This is what the flyer, nope, not that one, just kidding. It was here. This is what our flyer looks like. It's at a restaurant. We're going to be going to Rodrigo's at 7 o'clock this Friday. So hopefully you can make it. All the flyers are in the back table. And um, also this month, we're going to be going strawberry picking. It's on Monday the 24th at 10 a.m. We just want to encourage you to bring a sack lunch. And also, um, I was told that it's probably best to bring an umbrella stroller. It's really hard to have your child in, in a regular stroller. It's very narrow. And you probably, if you can, have a baby like in a carrier. It's easier to get around just so that you're not like getting frustrated and, you know. That stroller, I'm just saying. Not that I've ever been. Um, save the dates for next month's event. We have a mom's night out on Friday, April 11th. We are going to the movies. So, yay. We don't have the movie just yet because it's a little too early for that, but uh, it's coming up. And that's at um, Temeku Cinema. And lastly, let's see, as far as our events are concerned, we're going to have a family barbecue coming up at Lake Skinner on April 26th. And there's a sign-up sheet in the back so we can um, make a count as far as who's coming so we can get enough hot dogs and hamburgers for everybody. So sign up. It was a lot of fun last year. Um, also in the back table, we have books for sale. They are $10 each, known and loved and the artist's daughter. So they're back there. Um, oh, as a mobs group, we've decided to support Ashley McGrew. She was um, helping us in our mobs group. She's just incredible. And so she is um, doing missions work. Help me out. Where is she? In Panama. <coughs> so they, there's a need for um, like nutrition bars and snacks. So we're going to be having a basket in the back that you guys can come and chop stuff off if you'd like just to send her away. And um, if you do have a balance due for registration, you can see me to take care of that. And I'm sitting in the front over here. And last but not least, um, please don't throw any cups with liquid in that trash can. Um, we've, made we've made it super, super easy, easy for you. We have, have a pitcher, pitcher back there that says mop. So if you do have coffee or water, you could can dump, dump it in that pitcher and, and then dump your cup in the trash can. And that's it. Yes, that would be a good idea. <laughs> she could just introduce herself. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Um, I'd like to introduce to you our mentor mom, Betsy, who's going to lead us in our devotional today. taller. There, does that work? Okay. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us here today, and I just pray that you use the words that you've given to me um, as I prayed about it, and also for Sarah when she comes up and gives her talk. Father, just help us to um, represent you well. We love you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Paulette talked last time about being overwhelmed, and I this brought me to worry. I thought, okay, you know, we moms tend to worry. So I thought, okay, I'm going to tag along to Paulette's devotion. And I want to be honest and say I come from a long line of worriers. My grandfather made worry into an art form. And then his daughter, my mom, honed the skill of worry and she perfected it with age. She would do things that we call, we, we called it by nowing us. She would say, by now they should be here. By now they should be there. By now they should have called. By now, by now. And that was what mom did. And so I can just blame my issues with worry on my DNA, you know, right? Um, that would be nice to do that. But actually, um, I've come to understand all these years of living that um, to worry or not to worry is a choice. And um, I've also come to um, realize I need to make a concerted effort to choose joy instead of worry. I think we're losing me here. There. Okay. I'm going to slide down. And um, to choose God's um, to choose trust in God's faithfulness instead of choosing worry and fear. And I should be praying about the situation and the concern. It should be the first thing I do, not the last resort. 
And so what else have I learned? I have learned that worry doesn't accomplish much. And you've probably heard the saying that um, worry's like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere at all. <laughs> and that is really the truth. <laughs> And so here's confession time for me. Ask my kids when, you know, about when they were little. And when I ki my kids get together, they're 30 and they're 28 and 23. This is funny. <laughs> I'll hold it. How about that? Um, that? When they get together, they love to just reminisce about old times, which is great. They get going and they, they just... They get going, they get talking, and it's fun. But then there's times when they get talking, and I cringe. I'm thinking, oh, did I really do that? Did I really say that? I would rather do things, realize I would have done things differently. And one of the things that I was thinking about was that they, they remember how I used to sit by the window when Dan was late home, home from work. We didn't have cell phones. He was coming home on the 91. And I would try and hide that I was worried. But I would sit there at the window and wait for Dan to come home and get all worried. And I realized, I said, you know what, I, I tried to hide it, but my kids obviously saw it. I spent more time imagining him being in an accident and being gone rather than praying about it. My words to the kids when they were worrying was pray about it, but I was being a lousy example. And in my own choice to worry rather than to trust, and I panicked rather than prayed. So yes, there's healthy concern. That's not the same as worrying, though. And here are some definitions of worry. To give way to anxiety or unease, to allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles, a state of anxiety, a state of uncertainty over actual or potential problems, to torment oneself with suffer, uh, torment oneself with, or suffer from disturbing thoughts. So when we aren't taking our concerns to the Lord in prayer, we can go to the next level of full-on worry. And I also realize that when I'm worrying, I'm not trusting God. I'm advertising to anyone who's watching me or anyone who's hearing about my worries that I don't believe God can or will take care of me. And I was just a huge ouch. You know, I don't want to be that kind of example to my kids or anyone watching me. I should be praying, not worrying. And uh, Max Locato says, no one can pray and worry at the same time. God's very specific about worry in the Bible. I believe he knew we'd struggle with it. And I think, you know, moms get an extra dose of worry every single time we have another child. So what do we do with those worries? <laughs> Um, how do we balance being a good mom and being concerned with the well-being of our child and not take it to the unhealthy level of panic? So here's a few practical things. First of all, I mentioned praying, and I decided that I should need to dig out verses in the Bible that deal specifically with the topic of worry and of trust, and I would write them out on note cards and stick them everywhere, make lists and remind them. Or if you're good at memorizing, do that too. And then what does Jesus say about worry? He says in Matthew 6.25, don't be anxious about our lives, he says in Luke 12, which of you by being anxious adds a single hour to your life? And again in Matthew in 34, he says, don't worry about tomorrow, tomorrow worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then here's some more some verses on faithfulness that we can focus on. Uh, Psalm 33, for the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. In Thessalonians 3, God is faithful, he will establish you and guard you from evil. Psalm 105, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And I've also learned that you need to replace the worry with something positive. For me, that something is choosing joy. Um, it may sound silly, but since we're all moms, we've probably seen this movie a thousand times. I know my third daughter lived on this movie. It was Peter Pan. And he told the kids to think of a happy thought. And that really is a good thing. You want to replace your worry with happy thoughts. And that can be a Bible verse. It can be actually thinking of the happy thoughts. It can be remembering God's faithfulness. I know with me, I stick on Air One. It's just on all the time. I've got that going or my iPod with all my different songs because if that's constantly going in my head instead, I'm not worrying as much. I'm thinking about what the words say. I'm a music person. I come from a musical family. So the words of the music really speak to me. And then Corey Ten Boom said this, Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. And she also said, worry is a cycle of inefficient thoughts whirling around a center of fear. And I call that worrying in a circle, which is something that was a really bad habit that I learned from my mom. You start thinking about the, the situation, and you think about everything that could go wrong, and you worry, and you add all this stuff to it, and you come all the way back to where you started, and you've added more concern to it, and just worry in a cycle instead of bringing it up to prayer and just getting out of that cycle of worry and saying, Lord, what would you have me do about it? and replacing it with that positive you know, Bible verse instead. And like I said before, when I was up here before talking about listening to your kids, same thing with worry, it's not an overnight process. Anything we want to 
change and get better about ourselves is not overnight. We have to choose to do it. We have to make a concerted effort to change. And I'm definitely better um, about this than I used to be. Age has helped, too, because now I can look backwards and realize, you know what? Everything I worried about, everything I fretted about, everything I was so concerned wasn't going to be done the way I thought it should be done. Um, I've learned that God's faithful. He's taken care of it. And I, and I, and I look back and I think, oh, my goodness, if it, had been hap if it had been handled the way I wanted to handle it, it would not be a beautiful mess. It would just be a mess. And I'm really glad I'm not calling the shots. So... Instead of worrying about things, um, we have to know and believe that God is faithful and he does know what's best and that he does want the best for us. That's a huge trust, you know? And we have to give way to the trust rather than give way to the worry. We have to cast our burdens on him and believe his promise that he will take them from us and give us peace instead. So I leave you with this, Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. And then also trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So let's pray again. Lord, thank you so much for giving us the ability to um, read your word and realize that you tell us right then and there that you are faithful, you love us, you want the best for us, that we can trust you, your promises are real and true, and that we can cast our worries on you and not spend our life spinning our wheels, worrying about things we don't need to, that we really can trust in you. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, I'm going to introduce you guys um, to someone you already know, <laughs> and I always take it out because it bugs me. Um, uh, Sarah is going to be talking today, and Sarah has been married to Jeff for 17 years, and she together they have four boys, and she has a very clean house. <laughs> She's going to talk to us about cleaning today. <laughs> um, I hope to leave today being totally inspired to go home and vacuum and sweep and mop and organize. So I'm excited. It's very practical today. Get ready. Take some notes. You'll love it. <laughs> Do you want this? I don't know. You figure it out. I wouldn't um, say my house is a very clean house. My Can I use some chapstick real quick? <laughs> this is informal, so I can do that. Um, I have a pretty neat house, but it's not a spotless house. You know, some of those houses you go into are super spotless, and then you don't want to. This is really weird. Oh, well, I'll hold it. I'll hold it like Marla did. It's okay. Um, anyways, I do like a neat house, and I think that um, it makes everybody feel comfortable when it's neat. Several years ago, I went, stopped by a friend's house unannounced, and um, was invited in, and the house was horrendous. That's the only way I can describe it. It looked like it had never been vacuumed. Um, stuff was all over the place, and to be honest, I didn't even want to sit down. Does that sound snobby? Um, but it's the truth. I couldn't sit down because I didn't know what I was going to sit down on, um, and I didn't stay very long, and I didn't really understand why I was invited into the house because for me, I would have been completely humiliated. Anybody else have that problem ever? Being uncomfortable in a home that's not taken care of? Um, I felt uncomfortable, and I was really glad to get out of there, and I never went back, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I never went back. Um, because I didn't understand at that time how somebody could have their house get so out of control. But we're going we're gonna to get to that. Anyways, um, my topic is embracing your dirty mess. We're not going to embrace the dirty mess, but we're going to embrace how you can take care of your dirty mess. <laughs> so, um, you know, keeping our houses are, is really hard. I mean, especially when you have little kids. When my kids were little, we had a two-story, and I can be honest here, where there were most days when I was having people over, I always kept the downstairs clean for people to see, but I wanted to put that, you know, yellow caution tape over the stairs so nobody would go up there because it was awful upstairs. It looked like a bomb went off. Um, that is my true confession. So I like a neat house, but upstairs was really bad. Um, <laughs> um, this year, the steering team and the mentor moms have been doing a study on the Proverbs 31 woman. So um, 
we're going to look to see what Proverbs 31 has to say about keeping your home and um, being homemakers. And the Bible has a lot to say about being a homemaker. You guys can do a word study if you want to and see how many verses come up. It is amazing. So I'm not going to do all of them because we'd be here for a really long time and I have 30 minutes. So we're just going to take a look at Proverbs 31. Um, and I'm going to read. I have to put my glasses on for this because I'm getting old and I can't see. <laughs> Uh, don't laugh at me. Okay, Proverbs one. <laughs> hey, what happened? Oh, there we go. Um, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night. That's super early. Um, and she provides food for her household. Oh, we're going to get to you girls who like to sleep in. And a portion for her maid servants. <laughs> she considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself, and her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is a law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So from this, um, my notes are printed in a very large font, so I don't need glasses for that. Um, <laughs> uh, we learned that this, this woman is, she's trustworthy and she is industrious. And all industrious means is that she is diligent and hardworking. Um, she's organized. She is loving. And those four qualities are qualities that, as women, we should aim to be. But today, we're just going to focus on two of them. And we're going to talk about um, being industrious, hardworking, and being organized. Because I think in order for us to keep our homes, we have to be organized. You guys have probably figured that out by now. You know which rooms are organized and which ones aren't. And um, being hardworking. Because our homes are an endless cycle of work. We get done with one room, and the other room's messy. And so we go, it's the circle, like we were talking about earlier, the circle of worry. Um, our homes are the same. So verse 10 through 12 tells us that she manages her household well. She's industrious. She's diligent and hardworking all the days of her life. She's super exhausted. <laughs> because we have to be hardworking all the days of our life. Um, take your vitamins, girls. Um, verse 13 tells us that she works willingly with her hands, and her heart is set. She's not a lazy woman. You can't be a lazy woman and take care of your home. 14 and 15 tells us that she serves her household. Um, she's organized, and it shows in the way that she takes care of her, her family. If we're not organized, we're not going to be able to take care of our children or our husband, either one. And we are our husband's helper. By definition, the wife is the husband's helper. We are there to help him. We're not there for him to serve us. So some of you might need to take a walk with that one. Um, verse 27, um, she watches over the, her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She knows what's going on in her home, and she's not lazy. Now, we all know what's going on in our home. My stepson, Blake, just several years ago, this not in my notes, but I just thought of it. He used to always be the one boy who would always volunteer to help clean up the kitchen. And when he was cleaning up the kitchen, he would eat all the leftover food, you know, <laughs> and I knew that's why he was volunteering, but I never said nothing. I'd let him keep volunteering, and he's the one who would wake up in the middle of the night, and I had a 
I didn't buy much junk, but the junk I did buy, I kept it above the pantry, and the door squeaked. And so I knew when anybody was getting in there. I mean, we know what's in our cupboards, right? We know how many are in there, when we're going to have to shop again. Um, we know what's going on in our homes. Um, verse 30, I think, is a key to who this Proverbs 31 woman is. She's a woman who fears the Lord is what it tells us. And for us, um, when we fear the Lord and have that deep respect for him, he's going to show us what we need to do in our homes. What I do exactly in my home is probably not what you're going to do in your home because your home is different than mine. So you need to see where the Lord leads you and guides you. And hopefully today, I hope you guys all get one takeaway um, that will help you in your homes. Um, but one thing I love about the Lord is that he just gives us everything he need, we need in order to accomplish what he has for us. Um, Proverbs 14, 1 says, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one pulls it down with her own hands. And I don't want to be that woman who, who tears my home down. Don't stress about having to take care of your house. You can work on one thing at a time. Um, when you have big projects, don't think of the whole thing as a big project. Th just think, I'll give you an example. Um, most of you know my husband and I are moving, so I look at the garage, because that's his domain, so I really don't usually do anything out there, but we have to pack the garage up, and I look at the garage and I think, oh my goodness, how are we gonna do this? But if I just look at one wall, I think, oh, we can do that, and then we can do the next wall next time. So just look, take it in little, little um, pieces. Elizabeth George, in her book, A Woman After God's Own Heart, she talks about how managing our homes should be our top priority as the wife of the house. And have any of you ever read that book, A Woman After God's Own Heart? Um, the leadership team and the mentor moms did it a few years ago. But anyways, it's a really great read, you guys. It's, it's an easy read, and she gives a ton of helpful things about just being a mom and a wife and a woman. Um, anyways, as the, as the wife, we know that we set the tone in our homes right? If mama is in a bad mood, everybody knows it. At least they did. My son, Chris, when he was little, he asked me one time, he said, mama, he was about two, he said, are you mad? And, and I was mad, but I was trying not to let the kids know I was mad. And I said, no, I'm not mad. And he said, well, why are your lips doing this then? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that? Your kids know. You don't have to say a word. They know your faces. So, um, <laughs> funny. Uh, a wise woman diligently and purposely creates an atmosphere that is peaceful and inviting. We want our husbands to want to come home. We want our husbands to want to come home. After a long, hard day at work, do you want your husband thinking, I don't want to go home because of the house is the mess or it's chaotic there? A, a house that is clean and in order brings peace. And um, where there is peace, your husband's going to want to be. Who wants to be in chaos? The first step is choosing. Just like Betsy said earlier, choosing not to worry. We have to choose to do the work in our homes willingly, um, embracing it and doing something about it, not being lazy about it. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to, to men. Sometimes I think that the Lord put that verse in the Bible just for me regarding housework because I'm going to scrub the toilet and those who know me know the bathroom is the worst thing for me. I hate cleaning the bathroom. I love clean bathroom, hate cleaning it. Because I think, well, who's going to appreciate that I scrub the toilet? Nobody's going to appreciate it. They're just going to be, they won't even think about it. All they know is they have a clean toilet because I cleaned it. So for me, I can get a really, really bad attitude going on when I'm doing housework. Um, but we have to remember who we're doing it for. Don't think like I'm doing this for my husband or my kids. You know, do it for you unto the Lord, you know. Um, Anyways, we're going to move on to some practical tips. And I've got Sarah's top 10. <laughs> top 10. All right, you guys ready? You might be mad at me after this. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> okay, number one, be home. If you're not home, you can't take care of your home. Right? Um, I know... We get really busy with things to do. I know the kids have to go places, but if you're not home, you cannot take care of your home. Um, 
a good a good rule of thumb for me is I always try to stay home at least one day a week. So I'm going to choose a day, and it might be a different day this week than it was last week. But choose one day where you can stay home and get something extra done. So um, maybe it's cleaning out the junk drawers. Take a little piece of something in your home. Don't think I have to clean every cupboard in the whole house. Just choose a cupboard or a closet. Just choose one thing. When the kids are napping, do one thing. It might only take you 15 minutes, but choose one thing. Um, on top of your normal stuff that you get done. I know when you have little ones, it gets more difficult, but you girls are smart girls. You can figure it out. <laughs> okay, so four times a month, you get one extra thing done. And if you do that all the time, pretty soon you're in this cycle. Like I cleaned my junk drawer out like two years ago, and it's still clean and organized. It's fantastic. You know, my junk drawer is organized. Um, anyways, yeah, stay home. Don't run around every single day with play dates. Play dates are good, but not every single day of the week. Choose one day to stay home. Okay, number two. Hang up the phone. Get off Pinterest or Facebook or that book, whatever it is for you. Get off of it. Um, for me, uh, it usually is something different. Some For several years, it was reading. I love to read novels. And so for me, I had to put down that novel and say, I cannot read until whatever gets done. I just had to give myself rules. Because it's easy to, to spend two or three hours reading or two or three hours on Facebook or Pinterest or whatever it is for you guys. I don't know what it is. Um, well, some of you, I might know if it's Pinterest because I'm on Pinterest. <laughs> I'm like, wow, she's on Pinterest a lot. Uh, um, but yeah, get off those things and give yourself something to do. Proverbs 31, 7, 27 says, remember, we, we read this earlier. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So you've got to determine what your bread of idleness is, I whatever it is, and then um, put it in the right priority so that you can take care of your home the way we're supposed to take care of our homes. Okay, number three. Uh, brings us to the next point. Number three, um, a to-do list. Um, Julie talked about a to-do list, I think, when we did the mentor mom panel, right? Did she talk about her to-do list on her calendar? Her calendar, which had her to-do list on it, <laughs> I think. Um, so in the mornings, what I do is I wake up, and, and you guys that have tiny little babies, it's going to be more difficult for you. You that have little kids, get up before they do, and we're going to get to that pretty soon. But um, I take my cup of tea, and I take my pen and my pencil, and I make my to-do list for the day. Um, and at the top of that list, I'm going to be honest with you, I usually write, make my bed and clean the kitchen. Because I know that I'm going to at least get to mark off two things right away, because I make the bed right away and clean the kitchen. Usually, usually I wake up to a clean kitchen, but I can still cross that off. And I like crossing things off because it makes me feel like I've accomplished something. <laughs> so make a to-do list. Um, <laughs> Some days I get the to-do list done, and some days I don't. But also what I put on that to-do list is anything my husband wants me to do. So um, I started doing this a couple years ago when we did the, the Bible study, um, A Woman After God's Own Heart, and she recommended in one of the chapters that um, before your husband goes off to work, say, honey, is there anything I can do for you today? And so I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So mind you, this was we'd been married 15 years at this point, so... Jeff's getting ready to go to work, and I said, honey, is there anything I can do for you today? And he, he looked at me and said, no. And I'm like, all right. Next day, I did the same thing. Honey, is, is there anything I can do for you? And he said, what's going on with you? I said, nothing. <laughs> Just wondered if there was something I can do for you. And so thus began the habit. And some days, he would say, there's nothing. Some days, he'd give me a little bit of something. And the first day, he gave me a lot to do something, I thought, I have so much to do today because my list was that long today and he's given me this thing to do that was going to take some time and I thought I really don't know if I have time for that. I didn't tell him that but then God said he's your husband. He's your first priority. So you know what I did with his thing? I had to put it in the number one priority slot and I got that done for him. So try that with your husband you guys. It's He'll be impressed. And I ended up having to confess to him that Elizabeth George told me to do it. <laughs> he liked it. 
So um, whatever your husband has to do is number one on the priority list. Okay, number four, shopping. Let's talk about shopping for a little while. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has a problem shopping in here. But um, I learned a long time ago that when I was shopping, and for me, um, the malls, that's not it for me. For me, it's estate sales. I live in Menifee, and estate sales start on Thursday, and I can just do a little loop in Sun City, and they have signs that say estate sales, estate sales, estate sales. So um, even though you get great prices, sometimes some of the stuff they're selling you don't need. So I learned to ask myself a couple questions before I bought something. One was, where was I going to put it? If I loved it and I had no place to put it, I might ask myself, who can I give this to who would love it and have some place to put it? But more often than not, if I didn't have a place to put it, that means you can't buy it. So um, whatever those rules are for you, because your house gets cluttered really, really quickly. I don't know if you guys have discovered that, but it has been apparent since we've been trying to pack. Oh, my goodness. I have so much stuff that I'm getting ready, rid of a lot of stuff. So um, the other thing that I ask myself is do I love it or just like it a little bit? So if I didn't really love it, then I wouldn't buy it. So what happens as you get older, um, all your stuff you get to trade up. You know, like, you know, when you're younger, you have to buy stuff that doesn't cost really so much money. But when the kids go away and you have extra money, um, you get to buy better stuff. <laughs> it's true. Um, so anyways, give yourself some guidelines when you're shopping because it's going to ease the clutter in your house. And it will be really good on your pocketbook, too. And be faithful to that, you know, whatever that is. Okay, number five is laundry. Laundry is never ending, isn't it? Never ending. Baby clothes, man, that load of baby clothes, one load, it takes you like three hours to fold because there's like 300 outfits in there. <laughs> but um, do a load every day. Here's how I do it. And it, just because laundry can pile up so quickly, um, when you throw a load in the wash, don't let it sit there for a couple days. Why the other one sits there in the dryer for a couple days. And that pile over there sits there for a couple days. And then the chair gets mounted with clothes over there, too, because then you have a huge mess that you never want to tackle. So just do one load. Do it to completion. Wash it. Dry it. Fold it. Put away. When your kids start getting a little bit bigger, they can take their clothes to their room. They really can. They're part of the household. Make them do things in the house. You're a family. The family doesn't mean mom is the slave and works for everybody. You're a family, so we do it together. So anyways, that's it on laundry. Wrinkled clothes are terrible, aren't they? You can tell those people who never take their clothes out of their dryer. <laughs> Spritz it with a spray bottle and stick it back in the dryer for a little while. It might take the wrinkles out. Um, number six, let's talk about your kitchen. The kitchen is like my pet peeve because I love to cook. I love to bake. Um, I love to cook for you. I love you to eat my food. Um, it's how I show you that I love you. But a clean kitchen is amazing. So the clean kitchen, when people walk into your house, if you have a clean kitchen, it makes a huge impression. Um, maybe not thinking about it, but subconsciously. It helps your whole house look better. So um, when you're doing dishes at night, hopefully at night, load the dishwasher, turn it on, and in the morning, when you wake up and you're making coffee or tea or whatever it is you're making, put the dishes away. And then you have an empty dishwasher for the whole day. You just throw things in there all day long and not throw them on the counter or into the sink, and it'll help you keep your kitchen clean. Um, try that. It really, really works. I promise you. Okay, number seven, make your bed. I hear my mom. My mom was like the biggest make your bed person ever. That was like her thing. Um, but it's true. When you make your bed, your whole bedroom changes. It makes your bedroom look like it's cleaner. So if you don't do anything else in your room that day, make your bed. Just get up and make the bed. Do it. It'll be become a habit. And pretty soon you'll hate not having your bed made. Just like the kitchen. Clean dishes in the kitchen does wonders for your kitchen. The bed does the same thing. Okay, number eight. Um, 
I'm just going to talk about age appropriate jobs. I have a list to pass out for age appropriate jobs. Um, you guys, your, your kids need to know that they contribute to the household. You guys are a family. They need to contribute. That's what a family does. So give them jobs starting today until they leave the house. It's true. It'll make your job way easier when you're passing on things for them to do. And they can do things starting when they're babies, you know, when they're walking. They understand things. Kids under understand things. Okay, number nine. <sighs> Get up early. <laughs> I know it. You're big girls now. <laughs> You're big girls now. Get up early. Um, your kids, here's the deal. I know, grumble, grumble. Grumble, grumble before your kids. <laughs> here's the deal. Your kids deserve to wake up to a mom who's ready. They deserve that. Don't they? A mom who's ready for the day? They do. Um, and I know you're tired, and I know it's hard. Um, it'll be worth it, I promise you. Get up early. Have five minutes alone in God's word. Whatever you need to do, get up before your kids. So whatever time your kids wake up. I know, when I wake up, my kids hear me, and they wake up too. We can think of a zillion excuses of why you shouldn't get up early. And I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Number 10, cultivate a thankful heart. Aren't you so glad you have a home to take care of? I'm so glad I have a home to take care of and a husband who loves me taking care of the home, who appreciates it. Even when he doesn't say anything, I know he appreciates it. Um, does he have to say something every single time I clean something? No. Sometimes, though, if I spend like a couple hours on something, I might mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice? Okay, I might not much. I will mention it, okay? It's not a might. I will. I'm going to mention it. If I've spent a couple hours on something, you better say something. Okay, <laughs> how's that for being thankful? Isn't that a great, great... <laughs> All right, I've got some handouts. Um, who wants to hand this stuff out for me? All right, so there's three of these and one of these and one of these. Okay. Um, while they're passing those out, I'm going to give you guys a couple resources um, if you guys probably like to go on the Internet. Uh, these are some great resources, um, and here's, I've got two of them. One is flylady.net. Have you guys used that before? If you need help in organizing your day and you just don't know where to get started, flylady.net, she will send you an email every single day and say, this is what you're going to do today. She is fantastic. So F-L-Y-L-A-D-Y dot net. And then another great resource, if you need help just getting started, is um, justmommies.com, J-U-S-T-M-O-M-M-I-E-S.com. Okay. Um, let's go over the age-appropriate chores first, okay? You guys see that one? Okay. Oh, I've got several of them here. All right. All right, you guys all have it? Age-appropriate chores? Okay. And we're just going to go over this briefly because my time is actually up. Um, there's age-appropriate chores up to 10 years old on here. So no matter where your children lie, there's stuff for them to do. Um, and let's just take the little ones, for example. When your kids start walking... They are usually understanding everything that you say. So they can help put away their own toys. You've probably experienced that already. Um, they can turn off the lights. And you know what? They're, take the little tiny little things that seem no big deal to you and start giving them to your children because what you're doing is you're creating a habit, a habit of them contributing to the household. So it might be, look at the 12 months old, turning off the lights, reaching for towels, um, taking out plastic dishes or cups. And we saw Haven unloading the dishwasher 
dishwasher on the thing, right? She was naked, but she was helping. She wanted to help. I mean, how old was she? Um, anyways, you guys can read this when you when you have some time um, and start spelling it out for your kids of how they can help you. Okay, next one is this cleaning calendar. And this one is, this is just a helpful tool. You guys don't have to use it, but it's a helpful tool of what you're going to do, you know, in the morning, all day, and at night, and then a weekly chore. Um, and this one on the bookmark, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, on the cleaning calendar, the big one, it, it says it's a swing day, but this gives you some, it's organization challenge, actually, is what it is, but this is stuff you could actually do on the swing day. So... Um, read that, and hopefully it'll help you guys um, keeping your house. All right. Any questions? Oh, good. I can't wait to come to your house. <laughs> your clean house. Anyways, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that um, you have spelled out in your word, Father, exactly what we are to do as homemakers, Father. And, Lord, I just thank you that you give us direction on what we need to do and you give us resources father and um, you don't leave us alone but you surround us with women who are in a like season like here at mops father and we're grateful for that lord i pray for these women father that you would just give them one takeaway today that they can take and um, apply it at their home father and that they can create an environment uh, where their husband wants to come home, Father, where their children aren't embarrassed to have friends over, um, and where chaos doesn't ruin, doesn't prevail, Father, but that your peace prevails, Father, in a peaceful setting, Lord. We thank you for this time. In your name we pray. Amen.